The difference between a great recipe and one that's full of mistakes is the difference between a delicious cake and a complete kitchen disaster. But in the case of your DNA, the recipe that makes you, you, it could be the difference between life and death. The DNA code is made up of pairs of four letters or base pairs. A and T and C and G. But if things go missing, get swapped, or the DNA gets damaged, this leads to mistakes in the recipe of life and it can lead to cancer. Your DNA is being damaged all the time, mostly by the hurly-burly of processes of life within ourselves themselves, but also by things outside the body, by the chemicals in tobacco smoke or UV radiation from the sun. But luckily, Nature has equipped us with tiny molecular toolkits that recognise and repair the damage. And one of them is BRCA2. Found on chromosome 13, the BRCA2 gene encodes a large protein that's responsible for repairing damage within our cells. But if BRCA2 is faulty or missing, our cells can't detect and repair damage properly. It builds up and it can lead to cancer. Inherited faults in BRCA2 are responsible for cases of breast, ovarian, prostate and pancreatic cancer that run in families. But rather than being a strength for cancer, having a fault in the BRCA2 gene may actually be a weakness, and it's one that scientists are trying to exploit. Meet my friend Jim. Now it turns out your cells have two ways of repairing damage to their DNA. One of them is with BRCA2 and a related protein called BRCA1. And the other is with a molecule called PARP. Yes, PARP, no sniggering. If cells have a faulty BRCA2, they're not so good at repairing damage to their DNA, but they can still struggle by because they have PARP. It's like having their belt cut. But this damage can build up and it can lead to cancer. Scientists think that treating these cancer cells with drugs that block PARP will mean that they can't repair their damage at all and they'll die. It's like cutting the braces as well. Thanks. Drugs that block PARP, called PARP inhibitors, are already showing promise in clinical trials for people with cancer with BRCA gene faults. And one day they may even be useful for treating cancer in the general population too. But there's a long way to go, and brilliant scientists around the world are busy cooking up new approaches for treating cancer like this. But unlike my efforts in the kitchen, developing new therapies for cancer isn't a piece of cake. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and sing it away.